Hey everybody, I am crossing my fingers that I am alive um, after Saturday and um, Facebook has, um, oh good, it looks like I am. Facebook has, um, oh come on, they've updated things and they switched my, you know, Facebook, they just keep messing with stuff. So, okay, somebody's watching. Chris, hello. Um, I think that's you. It's asking if I want to let you join in on the video. No. So, I forgive me. This is my first video since Facebook has decided to upgrade, upgrade in quotes, the business um, pages. And it's... It, I'm, it's like a giant learning curve, and I've literally had it for like less than an hour, maybe a little more, but I've played with it for less than an hour. So, I apologize for uh, Saturday not being there. Um, so today, I'm going to do a longer than normal Tiny Tip Tuesday, which is why I put that question mark in there, um, just to kind of make up for it a little bit. So... Some of the things I'm going to be using is the rectangle stitched framelits. I already took one out of here so you know which one I'm using. Um, one of my favorite die sets. The um, celebration paper. This is this 12 by 12 DSP, which has 12 sheets to each of 12 designs because they're double sided. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, it is called Rings of Love, and it does match the um, some stuff in the mini catalog, which I don't have that set. So, um, anyway, I just want you to know that that's there. We're going to be using some... Oops, I just dropped one. We're going to be using some uh, blends. Grab the one I dropped on one of our projects. I'm going to be using the Forever Friendship and the Go To Greetings on the projects that I'm actually stamping. So, that is where we are. So, um, if you guys will be patient, this is, oh my gosh. All right, did it stop? Um, something happened here. Hold on. Uh, it's asking me to install. Are you kidding? This is craziness. Okay, it looks like I'm back. I think I'm back. Am I back? I'm looking. Hang on, you guys. It, um, it, okay, I think I'm back. Okay. Okay, I, I'm not saying yes to that request. Thanks, Chris. I don't know what happened. Um, so I'm hoping you guys can now see me. It looks like you can. So see what I mean? Facebook is just like messing with me. It's like cray cray right now. All right. So a couple of things for everybody who ordered last month in June, any kind of an order this time, I sent you in the mail, and it's in a clear envelope so you can't see it, with a little note that says, do not open this until Thursday. We are going to be working on this project Thursday. Three of you also shared cards when I asked you to last time. That's not going to be a normal thing. That was just a special. Hi, Susan. Thanks for being here. But um, So Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, we're going to work on this, and I am going to explain TLC to you guys that I've been teasing about. So that's on Thursday. On Saturday, for everybody who bought the um, Gnomes Suite last month, these are the four cards. Um, we're going to be making these on Saturday. So um, obviously if you got the kit, you already have everything. You have the instructions. You can make it along with me. If you did not, you can still watch along because we're going to be making these four fun cards, and you will get to see um, how they're done. And um, you may decide you have to have the suite, too. You'll miss out on my special free kit, but anyway, it's awesome. So that's on Saturday for a Saturday sip. We're going to do that. Okay, so let's get to today. 
So it is, after all, watercoloring month. So I am going to start. I've got a few cards to do for you guys today. Like I said, I'm trying to make up for um, me crashing on Saturday. I don't know if you guys even saw that I did go live for like seriously like 10 seconds. And then after I go live, it, uh, Facebook always says to me, do you want to post this? I said no, because it was, you know. So unless you literally caught me right like that, you you didn't even know that I made the attempt. So, um, okay, so um, I have some of the designer series paper. It's pretty on both sides, right? It's so pretty. And that's the free paper. I have a piece of basic white cardstock that I cut out of that um, with the dies. <clears throat> the one that's missing. And I'm going to show you that because I do it again on something else. But uh, it's this one. This one might be the bigger one. Yeah, this one actually uses a little bit bigger die than what I'm going to be showing you later. But I love them because you can keep matting and matting and matting. It's so fun. All right, so... I'm going to move this over here so I can see. And I will show you um, my original design because um, all of the things that I'm going to be showing you today, I they're slightly going to be slightly different. Um, this is obviously thick basic white cardstock. You know how I love thick basic white cardstock. So, super simple this way. I'm going to just adhere that on now the designer series paper is cut five and a quarter or i'm sorry four inches by five and a quarter and um this is just a basic card you know out of a half a sheet of eight and a half by eleven card stock i'm going to use my liquid glue and i am just going to adhere this this glue i sold out of it at mega meat just sold out of it so I know everybody loves it it's I think I want to say four dollars in the catalog might be four and a quarter but I think it's only four dollars and honestly um I was selling it cheaper than anybody there the guy in the booth next to me people finally went to him when I ran out but they were like well Carrie sells it for four dollars and he wouldn't budge but you know just FYI it's a pretty good deal. Okay, so now I'm going to take this piece and this card I am making out of Forever Friendship. This is one of my favorite. I think, did I use this one last week? I think I did. I think um, I think I might have used that stamp because I did the time for a card again. I remember that. Love that. I love puns. I think they're just funny. So because I'm going to color with the blends, I'm going to use the Memento ink. If you're using water, you really should use stays on. I know that I did one recently and I used the Memento. You're going to really want to let it dry if you do that. Um, but the Memento is best for the alcohol markers. It will keep them from running. I still like to give it a minute to dry, though um, this one may not get that minute, so it might smear just a little bit. And I'm going to stamp this near the top and hope it's straight. Not bad. And then I'm going to stamp, our friendship will live forever. Oh, I forgot to grab the one for the inside. I'll show it to you. I did it on the other card. And I'm going to stamp that here near the bottom. And I forgot to grab... I forgot to grab ribbon. So let me do that real quick. I'm just going to grab the awesome um, vanilla with silver edged ribbon and we'll use that today. So um, the, I want, I guess I better do that first because I'm going to want that to dry and that'll give my ink a little bit of time to dry also. So let me find my opening. I, I usually have a trick. Oh, I did do it. I fold over, you know how it always has like a piece of tape? I don't know if you guys can see that. Like a little piece of tape. I fold it over so that I can try to find it when I go to open my cards. So, 
You guys have seen me do this a bazillion times, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again anyway. And I think I'm going to do it in the the um, Poppy Parade because that's on there. It's it's right on here, but I don't think I'm going to be coloring any of my leaves in Poppy Parade. And I'm just going to take it and I'm going to color the ribbon. Now I'm using the light. I could have used the darker, but I've, I've just decided to do it with the light. And I don't really know how much I'm going to need. I know I need to tie a bow and I'm going to want to then have an, another strip of it. So I'm not worried if I have too much because I will, I will use it again. And you can see how easy it colors, right? Um, it's a little bit variegated because, you know, I'm not the perfect demonstrator, as I have told you guys repeatedly. It's not me. So, um, and you know when you're using blends, you want a piece of paper underneath you. Um, because if I were to get this on here, it may, it may not come off. Um, I'm not sure, and I don't want to test the theory. So, I'm going to hope that that's plenty. So now I'm going to set that aside and let that dry a little bit while while we continue with this, which I should probably close my glue. Okay, so, and I wanted to show you the inside of the card. It, this says, our friendship will last forever, and then the inside is going to be unlike most of the plants I've owned. I don't kill that many plants anymore because my husband now takes care of most of them, so we're good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of follow the colors in this loosely. So um, I am going to color this big plant. I forget what it's called. I know it has a name. Um, but I'm going to start with the light balmy blue. And I'm going to try to avoid that hole. You know, these are the leaves that have that little hole in them. Right there. See it? Let me see if I can zoom in. There we go. Okay, so um, so you see the little the little hole right there, and then um, just gonna color. Now this isn't technically water coloring, but it does give you the watercolor effect, and. Um, so I really like it. I like watercoloring too. I'm not quite as good at it. I have a little bit steadier hand when I use the blends. Not not steady, steadier. Because <laughs> it's me, after all. So um, while I'm coloring, I am wondering how you guys are feeling about Celebration. Have you guys seen the Celebration catalog? I know many of you got it in the mail from um, me, well, through Stampin' Up! from me. Um, and I am really curious as to what you guys thought of it. I think it's pretty awesome. Yes, I'm a little biased being um, a demonstrator. I do tend to really, really like everything Stampin' Up! does. Can't really help myself. Um, I'm just adding a little bit of shading in here, and I'm using the pointy end this time. So, um, I don't know if you guys remember, I have showed the paper off that I'm using, this celebration paper, and it's just, it's so pretty. And I didn't think I wanted it at first, and one of my demonstrator friends kind of talked me into it. Oh no, you want it, you want it. And I, and, I'll, and I'll just be honest with you, I didn't want the log-related um, set. I already have that. Um, I know, it's hard to pick the freebies, right, Chris? I'm telling you. Um, I will tell you that my favorite, although I love designer series paper, I am in love with the um, hippest hippos and the dies. You guys saw um, I did a, that card where all, all I really used was the dies just oh so stinking cute um it kind of reminds me um last oh that's not good the last celebration i believe that was when we had the sheep remember so yeah so okay so there's that plant 
Now it's got some um, brown in it, so I'm going to be using that and some green. And I forgot to, to grab. Here we go. I knew I had them handy. So I am going to do some green. Now this reminds me of, I think it's called mother Mother-in-law's Tongue. There's probably a fancier name for it. I'm not going to get real fancy with this. I'm actually using a pretty light color. This is, um, what is it called? Dark Mint Macaron. It's not a super dark color. I mean, this is the dark and it's not really dark. But I wanted to be able to still see the, um, the images of the little lines that are in the leaves. So this one, I'm not going to, I'm not going to really do any shading. I mean, this is the dark, so it is what it is. And I'm kind of letting the lines be the variegated part of it. Now for this, I thought about doing the red, and so I'm kind of like, hmm, do I wanna? Well, I also wanted to tie in this. So don't think me weird, but I'm going to try something a little strange. And I know you're all going, well, that's nothing new, Carrie. You do a lot of strange things. So I think I'm gonna use the pointy end. I am going to start these with the little bit of brown. Oh, that's really darker than I wanted it to be. What color is this? It's a dark crumb cake. Let me grab the light one. Sorry, you guys. Grab the wrong marker. Okay. So that one might be dying. That little leaf might be dying. <laughs> terrible. I'm terrible. I know. So I'm just, and you notice I'm kind of doing um, my dark things. I'm thinking about where shadowing might be on them. And they're not, the shadowing is not necessarily in the same vein. So, um, like you notice, these two are two different ways because I'm seeing light coming from this way. So, um, think about that when you are coloring. And this one, I'm just going to leave a little there, a little there. This one might have a little more. So um, this is going to be the longest card because I'm doing all this colory stuff. Then let's see what happens when I take the light poppy parade, which is what I use to color the, um, the ribbon that we're going to use in a little bit. And I'm just going to kind of go over it. It's kind of taking the, the dark out. So I may have to adjust the way I do this which is kind of the norm for me. I like something, I try something. It's really important, I think, that we try stuff um, and, and play around. And if you don't like it, it's paper. Did I get lost again? Oh my gosh, did I get lost again, you guys? Nope, I can still see me. I just can't, I just can't see you guys anymore. So if you're commenting, I can't see you. So can somebody say, I see me. Can somebody else say, yes, I see you while I'm standing up? There's always a delay. So forgive me for talking while I wait for you guys to tell me. Say yes, say something. Dang. Yes, okay, thank you, Chris. Okay, I don't know what is going, this new, this new wonderful, great, wonderful upgrade from Facebook. Thank you very much, Facebook, for messing with me. I'm old. Cut it out. <laughs> I'm not that old. I should know what I'm doing. See, I kind of like these leaves a little better than the ones where it got darker. So I'm going to try a little bit of the dark and see if I can get some of that dark back in here. Kind of. Kind of can. It's starting to run a little bit. If you get too much color on something with these blends, it will it will want to bleed out. So I'm gonna stop playing with that now. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'm going to um, color in the pots. I don't want to color them in completely. This is the dark balmy blue, which I used up here on this one. I used the dark and the light. So I want to tie that back in. And there is. This is considered Night of Navy, but Night of Navy would have been too dark 
for um, for this process I wanted it to be a little bit lighter so when they when you see the colors on the back of the designer series paper some of them might be seriously dark night of navy and um, and some of them may be variegated shades of them so bear that in mind um, you may want to adjust your coloring and I know you guys have a lot now I'm taking the light and I'm kind of doing the same thing with this as I did with the leaves on this plant and I'm just letting the lines in the stamp be the color and then if I want to which I think I, I will try I'm going to put a little bit of shading just on the edges and near the bottom where you assume that there may not be you know it, it rounds out so it'll give it a little bit more dimension now for the plant here and the table I'm going to use the dark so um, soft succulent no it's not it's it's uh, soft suede and I'm going to just have a very dark piece of wood table so that is these pieces here and then I will put a dark strap on it and then I think I'm going to use the light crumb cake to color it in because I'm in my mind this is one of those wooden pots you know even though it doesn't have the the stripes and stuff just to tie in a little bit more of that um, color that in because it probably would show the pot in there too so super simple right but yet it's really cute and it and then it matches a little bit more with this paper that I put on there so now I'm going to want to put some I want to put a bow on it this bow looks a little lighter than I had hoped I probably should have used the dark But it's okay it'll still work right and then you know I have two pairs of snips we do sell we used to sell ribbon cutting scissors and that's what I used to use all the time and still do on my personal craft table but I wanted to show you guys that just by having a second pair that you just a brand new pair that you just put a piece of ribbon see this is some old of the similar ribbon this is just more silky where this is cottony um, I just put it on there and um, and when they're brand new if all you do with them is cut fabric like stuff ribbon for instance then it's not going to be a problem so I did color enough so yay that's a good thing oops and I don't know if you guys know this either but there's a hole in these covers and one of these little um, hinge screws I guess we'll call it is fatter than the other and that's the one that's the side that gets the hole you don't want to try to shove it in the other way you'll get it on but eventually um, it has I don't know if you can see but it has uh, like crack lines and eventually those will start to spread out and it won't stay on your snips so now I'm gonna take this and I'm going to grab some of my awesome stamp and seal and I'm going to put it on the back of the ribbon and this this actually grabs the ribbon um, this adheres to the ribbon fairly decently um, and I'm going to put it up here because I know I have a bow and I don't want the bow to hide my sentiment on the bottom so straight is a relative term in my world just so you know if you don't already how I feel about those kinds of things now this ribbon will want to twist and turn so there we go it's nice and long in the back so before I put the bow on I'm gonna grab dimensionals and I am going to set them on here those bow the ribbon is a little long you may want to trim them off I'm not really gonna worry about it they're stuck down because I have adhesive on the ribbon they're not going anywhere so um, I'm not gonna worry about that so I'm gonna adhere this to the card before I put on the bow and the reason I like to do that um, whether it's dimensionals or you're using it especially a tape adhesive 
is because if I had the bow on it, I would have a lump, right? There'd be like a lump under here. And I don't, I don't like lumps in my potatoes. Well, sometimes that's not true. My grandma occasionally had lumps and I liked hers. But, um, but generally in my craft products, I don't like them lumpy. So then I'm going to set that right there and then grab my tear and tape and put that on the back side of the ribbon. Now, how do you know the front side to the back side? Well, it's a personal choice thing. I can see this. Let's see if I can stand up and show you a little better. I can see this right here looks a little bit different than that. See how that's nice and straight and pretty? So that's how I know the difference. Okay, so I'm gonna set that on there and see my tails are not the same length so I'm going to trim this side a little bit I always have to be careful because I will trim and trim and trim and suddenly my tails are like super short so <laughs> use caution if you're like me and look you guys my take your pick tool is here woohoo I remembered to grab it I'm so proud of myself okay let go all right, and then I'm just going to stick that right in the center. So there is that card, and here is the same paper. It's just the opposite side of the paper. So the colors changed, the ribbons changed. Thank you for the love. Um, so if you want to do a quick screenshot, there you go. But um, that is that card, and it's match. All right, now let us do something else. This one, the other ones are fairly simple. I think you're going to like them. So I am done with all of these, I believe. But I'll put them close by because I never know. All right. So now this one, I am going to use again my favorite. You're going to see this, I think, on um, most of the cards I'm doing today. The Thick Basic White. Yay, right? I'm going to fold that in half and use my bone folder again and get some of this stuff out of my way okay now I'm gonna take what I did was I took this designer series paper and I cut it in half now when you cut it in half obviously this is not the same piece it's gonna be um, four by five and a quarter and then you cut it in half but if you want to flip it over you need to cut two because see this wouldn't work this uh, so I had to cut two so that I had one that went that way and you will see that the other one goes like so all right does that make sense okay let me make sure I'm I'm flipping it the way I want to yes okay so then I cut a piece of the poppy parade which is the color that's in here and um, this one is, so these might be a little bit shorter because, yeah, I trimmed them down a little tiny smidgen. This is um, four and like an eighth by five and a quarter plus an eighth. So whatever that is. And um, I'm going to glue those down on here. Maybe, maybe it's gonna let me. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Okay. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it to see that my points here and here are close to the corners. Perfection is overrated in case you have not heard that from me but if you follow me here on facebook.com forward slash memory inkers you may have heard that once or a thousand times I do not know uh, don't forget everybody since I mentioned that to share this video and if you share please comment below that you've shared um, sharing from my Facebook page is my um i don't mind you sharing my youtube channel of course please do but um if you're seeing this on my youtube channel um it is not live there okay um and if you're watching this on someone's who shared it 
and you want to keep following me, please go to facebook.com forward slash memory inkers. And while we're talking about that, memoryinkers.com is my Stampin' Up! website. It'll take you right to my demonstrator website. The hostess code right now, if your order's uh, under $150, which I know during celebration it may not be, um, but so don't use this code. So if you're if you're ordering under $150, use hostess code 2, T as in Tom, 6, J as in Jack, X as in X-ray, P as in Paul, R as in Robert, B as in Bob. Okay, so now you see I've got this piece. Now on the other sample I'm going to show you, I put a piece of ribbon here, but on this one I thought I'd grabbed... I thought, I thought, hang on, it's probably in my pile of stuff, which I have to now find it. Here it is. I knew I had it. I had an extra piece of this cardstock, um, which is the same color. So I was going to put this there. But as you can see, it is this length, plus a little bit. But it is not long enough. So that was my plan was to do that. So I was like, dang, I really want to do that. And I didn't want to mess up a whole nother piece of cardstock because I am cheap. So I kind of decided to find the center of it and snip it. Okay. Now I am going to put my adhesive on here. You can obviously use, the ribbon is a little bit harder because you're going on corners and you will, you will see, come on, you will see on my um, first sample, I did use ribbon, but bending it over the corners is not necessarily a, a, a joy and moment of fun. It just isn't. <laughs> so now I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to hang it over a little bit because I'm going to want to cut it down. So, oops, I'm going to try and get it centered on there. And then I will take this one, maybe. I will do the same thing and hang it over a little bit and, and try to make them so they look like they're, it's still all one piece, okay? Then I'm going to take my snips. Now I didn't practice this, so let's everybody hope that what I did. And I'm just trimming off these pieces. Oops, I might have trimmed that a little too much, so we'll straighten that out. I'm just um, trying to trim these off a little bit. So see, now it, it fits in there. Then I'm going to put it onto my card front. And then, of course, we need to cover that up. So I'm going to show you what I did there. Come on, I, I guess I'm running out. It's a good thing I have, like I keep these in stock now. Um, I always did and then I took them to Mega Meat and sold them. So now it's like my go-to thing. I'm always adding them to my order, like lots at a time too. I'm not even, I'm not playing around anymore. <laughs> I want lots. So <clears throat> now I'm gonna take, and these are punched out of, I think it's called the Lovely Label Punch. And I'm going to stamp um, thank, uh, thank you in Poppy Parade right in the center. Like so. Part, you know, i got to move this because I need my head in the way. I apologize. Probably because I put this on a really small stamp or um, block this time. <clears throat> so there you go. You see the thank you, right? And I did not do this on my first one. You could do this with your trimmer, which um, would probably give you a straighter cut than what I'm doing here. I can see already that that is not a straight cut, but you know how I feel about perfection, so all is good. So I'm just going to trim that off again, do it again. Okay. So now it looks a little bit different, so I can adhere it to um, the same image, or the same um, punch in Poppy Parade. 
and I'm going to put that on there and just line it up so that the ends line up and sort of disappear. Now I could put that on there, but it doesn't fit very well, right? And look, it did not hide my things. So, uh-oh, what do I do now? Well, I'm going to peel this off real quick before it sticks. And I'm going to show you. I just wanted to show you that that was an option. You will see that this is what I did on my original. I cut them in half. I should not be using my ribbon scissors for doing what I just did. And I am going to, I'm going to flip these over since it has adhesive on it. And I'm going to have adhesive all over my fingers. And I am going to widen it like so. And I'm trying to make it as even as possible, which it's me, so you know how I feel. I'm not going to keep saying it. You guys know. And that's not good either. See, that's the one thing good about the liquid adhesive is I can keep messing with it. And then I'm going to trim off. Can you see where it's still hanging over? I'm going to trim that off a little bit. This is how I get more out of my punches. And I'm going right to this corner so I don't lose the corner. And yes, I can see that that is crooked. It's moving on me. I think part of the reason it's moving on me is it's sticking to my fingers. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Try to make it about the same. No guarantees in life, especially when you're me. And again, do a quick snippy. i got to quit using those. I'm going to have to clean them now. Remember I said don't use your ribbon scissors for anything but your ribbons. Do as I say, not as I do, apparently. I'm going to have to clean my fingers crazy. No, I can't see what I'm doing. Let go. Glad you guys are sticking with me through this insanity. Okay, so now I've got that. That should be enough to cover it. I'm going to hope that it's enough to cover it where I messed up here. Not messed up. Shortened it. Oh, see? I've got so much of adhesive on the back of this thing and on my fingers. So now I'm going to put a little more adhesive on here on these pieces. Notice I cut them in the opposite direction. I think I've shared this tip, but it's been a long time since I have um, shared this tip with you guys about um, splitting a punch in order to make it matte. So I'm hoping you guys are seeing this and you're enjoying it and you're good with it. Because I have no idea if you are or you are not. So. Trying to get it to where it looks similar to both sides. This almost looks like I punched it funny, doesn't it? Like, look at that. I don't know what happened. I wonder if I... Well, I'm using it anyway. I think I must have cut it short, but it works. I'm fine. Then I'm going to put that on some dimensionals. And I'm going to put one in the center, too, because I want to make sure I, I grab those two pieces. Now, let us hope that this was big enough to cover where I shorted the cardstock. And I think it is. Yep. Well, it's a little bit off right there. Let me see if I can move it up without tearing the designer series paper, which I think I just did. Our dimensional stick, baby, especially when you press down on them. Oh, golly. This has just been a fun day here in Carryland, said nobody. And I just add some adhesive on the back of these because I know I kind of stripped it. 
All right, let me, I'm going to move this down so I can see a little better what I'm doing, you guys. So just bear with me. Okay. Whew, voila. There we go. So uh, here you can see the other one. I kept the, um, the white label the same. I didn't trim it down. I just added some bling. Oh, thanks, Chris. I appreciate that. I'm standing up so I can see what you just wrote. Anyway, there you go. If you want to take a quick screenshot um, and you can see opposite sides because I had to cut two pieces of that DSP to get it to flip the way I wanted. So there's that. All right. So now we're going to do another fun card real quick. And again, look what I'm using. Who to funk it? The, um, this is the last card I'm making. Then I just I just have some other samples I'll just show you. But um, I love, 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 love. I'm not a bird person, as I've told you guys a million times. I'm not a bird person. But I love, I love this paper. It's just so, so pretty. And I've already pre-die cut it with this from the awesome um, rectangle, stitched rectangles. And if you look real closely see how cool I think that might oh there we go okay so can you see how when I take this off I have it sticky noted okay can you see how both pieces I'm trying to get it now where I can see both pieces have stitching the piece I cut out wow look at how I've got big fingers now people this has stitching and so does the frame has stitching too right so very cool okay let me let me um get back down to like a human size it's a little better i guess i can be normal since um that's a little too there we go okay so um you do not need sticky notes for this i just did it so you could see that it was cut out of the um same paper so what I'm going to do, and I'm looking at mine to see what I did, is I'm going to move it off of here because this is all sticky now. And again, fold your thick basic white. When If you get the basic white or really any cardstock and you're planning to cut it in half and like, like I keep a stock of stuff cut in half, um, score it before. So I score mine down um, the four and a quarter before I cut it at five and a half or vice versa, whichever it is you're going to be doing. Um, so this is like a regular card. Obviously, if you're going, if you want, you know, a, um, if you want your card to open like that, then you're going to score it at five and a half and cut it at um, eight and a half. No, it's already eight and a half. You're going to score it at five and a half and cut it at four and a quarter. Whew, that was a lot of brain power, man. Wow. All right, so now I'm going to take this beautiful frame with the pretty little birds on it. And as you can see, the back is very pretty too. And I'm going to, what is up with my clue? I know it's not empty. I think it's because um, when I'm doing videos, I open and close it so much to try and keep it from drying out that I get can you see I get um, glue goobers all the time so now I'm gonna center this right on like you normally would and I'm going to take this little beauty and I'm going to flip it like so and I am going to adhere that down. It's like hard for me to do because look at how look at how pretty that is just with the birds. I mean, they came out better than the other sample I'm going to show you. Like, look at that. That's perfect. But oh well, snooze you lose. That's just how it goes. Um, so I'm just going to take that. Now you will see that when you do something like this, um, my husband just sent me a text about The Walking Dead. Do you guys watch The Walking Dead? Does anybody watch that? I'll go back and check later to see if I have any TWD fans. Come on, people. My husband and I are sci-fiers. 
I'm very blessed. My husband is not a big sports guy. He likes pump you up videos. You know, he likes to watch like the bodybuilders and stuff, but he doesn't really. Um, and like we watch American Ninja Warriors, but he's not a big like sportsy sports sports guy. So now we've got that look. And then I have this piece, which I'm going to glue on the inside. I'll just, I'll just glue it down there just so that it matches. Um, I would do the bird side, but um, you can't, that, that's not pretty. <laughs> so I will glue that in there later. All right, so now I am going to stamp Happy Birthday in Night of Navy. Don't forget to hang around. I have more cards to show. Um, this will be the last one that I'm stamping. And I'm stamping it off to the right side. There we go. And the size that you do here is up to you. This is um, three quarters width and I don't know how long. I just wanted, to, I, I knew how long the stamp was and I wanted it to be a little bit longer. So my Knight of Navy is very juicy, so I wanted to uh, trim that out. So I want to have a tail on this, and that's going to be too long, so I'm just going to trim that down. Um, we do have a um, punch that will punch tails for you, but I am just eyeballing it, and you see how I kind of cut it in the center, and then I can look across and see where I should, I should trim this one about where that is. Okay, and then I can go from this corner to that spot, which should be approximately the center. Okay, so that's how I got my fishtails on there. Now I'm going to adhere that to Knight of Navy, a little strip. It's one inch wide by whatever. Um, like I said, go by the size of your sentiment, and this sentiment comes from the um, go-to greetings which as you see I could have used several different sizes of happy birthday uh, so I love that stamp set so versatile I know that you're thinking why would I want a stamp set with so many of the same words on it because it's just awesome you're always looking for the right size sorry about the pounding you guys um, the right the right size in the sentiment that you want and voila there they are it's awesome I love that stamp set as soon as I saw it in the catalog, I went nuts. All right, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to literally put it right to the end. I said this was one inch wide, but I, I think it might be a little bit wider. It might be one and a quarter. Okay. So I'm going to hold that for just a second and let my white glue dry or green glue. People call it green glue because it's in a green, the bottle has green. And then I'm going to trim this again, find my center, snip up, and then go from the corner to that. It's a little harder to see on the Knight of Navy. I'm trying to find it. There we go. And then do the same thing over here, find that center. Okay, so now I have this cute little happy birthday. And this is going to be a flat card. I am not um, stamp. I'm not dimensionally anything on it at all. You can. Um, it would look good too. But sometimes, you know, uh, depending on where you are, your post office gives you a hard time about bums. And so every now and then, I like to throw something in there that's completely flat. Um, plus, not everybody is a dimensional. Now, to decide where I'm going to put this, I don't want to cover up any bird heads. So I'm going to go right to the edge of the designer series paper and I'm just going to put that on there. Now if I wanted to, um, or you want to, you could definitely make this longer, dovetail both, put it in the center, cut your birds the other way, make it landscape. It's just, it's just cute. So um, let me stand up and show you. Here's the other one that I did. I did it the opposite way. Oops, something. Oh, that's the inside. And you can see I did this one with the inside too. This one, when I cut it, it, it had the birds going the way I wanted, so I was good with the birds. So, and that one's thinking of you. And you can see that I, I cut the Knight of Navy a little bit thinner on that one. I also added some champagne rhinestones on this one. 
Um, you need to find something. What are you saying? I don't know. I'll have to look up whoever said something about you need to find something. Because um, it looks like it's frozen. But uh, hang on. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. You need to find something to keep your glue upside down. I have it on my other desk, Susan. I just don't have it here. I mean, I do. I have. I keep this little bucket here. But when I'm doing it, I don't. I just I keep laying it down. So, yeah, you're right. Okay, so there's that card. So um, the ones that I made you today, I'll show you those again real quick. Let me um, zoom down. Or how? <clears throat> I'm not sure what you call it, but so I can lay all these out for you. So I made those two. And I made these two. And I made these two. Well, technically I only made one of each of them, but those are the those are the cards that I made for you guys today. But let me show you some others with that designer series paper that I just think are so pretty. This one's super simple. I used some of the awesome um, gold shimmer ribbon. This is the one that's in the mini catalog, not the annual catalog. And it's just pretty all by itself and a little hello. And there it is. And the hello also came from the go-to greetings. It's right there. So, um, and that's cut with one of the round dies from one of the other die sets. This paper is so pretty too. I mean, I've got thinking of you on, but how cute would this would be like welcome to the neighborhood or congrats on your new house or whatever. Another super simple, no sentiment at all, write whatever you want in there. And then um, you've got just a plain, this is a good guy card, maybe not with the bow, but eh, guys can dig a bow. You can also add more to it. I just wanted to keep it super simple. And then look, Merry Christmas. This is on one of our larger, um, uh, I made a larger card. It's like six and a half. It's like note card side, our, our big note cards. So um, there you go. And it's just Merry Christmas. And I forget where the Merry Christmas came from. I don't know, but it's there. So anyway, those are the cards for today. Scoot them up. And I hope you like this little extended, not so tiny tip Tuesday today. Um, again, if you have any questions, you can e email me at memoryinkers at gmail.com, shop at memoryinkers.com, use the hostess code 2T6JXPRB. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and post below that you, or comment below that you've. Um, shared and you will be in a drawing for a prize um i always give stuff away and oh i don't want to forget to tell you guys this i think i did already but i'm going to repeat myself for people who showed up just a little late um saturday for everybody who bought the gnome kit we're going to be making the cards for saturday sip and then um because i couldn't find another way to put it in and then those of you who ordered last month got this in the mail wrapped in plastic that said do not open Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, be here. It will be saved, so you will be able to see it later. But um, just so you guys know that um, that's going to be, and it was in your note when you got it in the mail. Thursday, 6 p.m., right here, Memory Inkers, facebook.com forward slash Memory Inkers. Okay, you guys, um, come watch on Thursday. Find out what TLC means. I know I've been um, putting little silly sneaks out there you may notice that almost all of those are from independence day because i just have to be watching it i'm like oh look at that expression and i kept snapping pictures how silly right so anyway i will see you guys um on thursday and then again on saturday so have a wonderful and blessed week see ya